All right, so today we're taking a deep dive into unisive therapy. Yeah. This is a biotech company that um, a lot of our listeners have been asking about. And you know how we're always talking about, you know, healthy habits and things like that. Yeah. Well, those healthy habits, they really do connect to how well our kidneys function. That's right. Our kidneys, they're the filters in our body. Yeah, they're doing a lot of work behind the scenes that we don't even realize. Yeah, it's really amazing how much they do. Well, that's where Unisysive Therapeutics comes in. They're developing some really interesting treatments for kidney disease, and they're about to present some uh, some pretty exciting new research at a huge medical conference. It's called the American Society of Nephrology's Kidney Week 2024. Oh yeah, that's like the Super Bowl for nephrology. Okay, so uh, they're going to be presenting not one, not two, but four posters at this conference, which is a big deal. That's huge, especially for a company their size. Yeah, and there's one in particular that's got everyone talking this late breaker presentation. Oh, the late breaker. So imagine this, you're at this big conference, everyone's talking about the research that's being presented, and then boom, out of nowhere, new research drops. Like a surprise album. Kind of. It's research that's so groundbreaking, so new, they had to add it to the schedule at the last minute. And that's what a late breaker is, the VIP pass of the science world. And Unisysive got one for their research on a treatment called oxalanthanum carbonate, or OLC. OLC, okay. I've yeah. heard whispers about this one. Yeah, and it's specifically for patients with hyperphosphatemia, which is a common problem for people on dialysis. Right. But, um, you know, let's break that down a bit. What is hyperphosphatemia and why should we be paying attention to it? Okay, so phosphate, it's a mineral. We need it. It's in our bones. It's in our cells. But if you have too much of it in your blood, especially when your kidneys aren't working well, right. that's when you get hyperphosphatemia. Hyperphosphatemia. Yeah. It's like a traffic jam in your bloodstream. And almost everyone with end-stage renal disease, so ESRD, has to deal with this. Okay, so we got a phosphate traffic jam. Exactly. And it can cause all sorts of problems. Like what? What kind of problems? Well, think about it. Your body needs phosphate, but it also needs calcium. Mm. They have to be balanced. But when you have too much phosphate, it can mess with your calcium levels, weaken your bones. You can get fractures more easily. And even worse, it can lead to heart problems. Heart problems. How so? So all that extra calcium and phosphate, it starts to build up in your blood vessels. They get mm -hmm. stiff, narrow. It's like your arteries are turning into concrete. Wow. That doesn't sound good. Not good at all. Mm -hmm. And the scary part is over 80% of people on dialysis has signs of this hardening of the arteries. So managing your phosphate levels, oh. crucial, especially for folks with kidney disease. Absolutely. So how do doctors typically manage this? Like what can be done to keep those phosphate levels in check? The usual approach is a two pronged attack, so to speak. Yeah. First, they try to limit phosphate in your diet. Okay. So you have to watch what you eat very carefully. And second, they prescribe phosphate binders, which are medications that basically trap phosphate in your gut so it doesn't get absorbed into your bloodstream. So it's kind of like a two birds, one stone situation. You're limiting the intake and then whatever gets through your, uh, your blocking, right? Exactly. You got it. Yeah. Trying to control it from both ends. That sounds like a pretty good plan. Is it working? Well, here's the thing. And it's a bit of a bummer, unfortunately. 75% of dialysis patients in the U.S. still struggle to hit those target phosphate levels, even with these treatments. 75%. 75%, which is a lot, right? Imagine taking all those medications, having to watch everything you eat, and still not reaching your goal. Mm -hmm. It's frustrating for both patients and doctors. Absolutely, yeah. So what's the missing piece of the puzzle? Well, what we hear from doctors a lot is that the biggest hurdle is actually the pill burden itself. Imagine having to swallow handfuls of large, often chalky tasting pills multiple times a day, every single day. It's a lot to manage, and it can lead to people skipping doses or even giving up on treatment altogether. Yeah, I can see how that could be really tough, especially when you're already dealing with so much. Okay, so tell me, how does OLC address this pill burden issue? So OLC is a next generation phosphate binder, and Unisysive has used some really cool technology to create it. Okay. They've basically taken lanthanum carbonate, which is the active ingredient in OLC, mm -hmm. and they've made it into these tiny, tiny nanoparticles. And because these particles are so small, they can pack a lot of phosphate binding power into a much smaller pill. So it's like a super concentrated phosphate trapping pill. Exactly. And the best part, instead of taking a handful of those big chalky pills, patients taking OLC might only need to take one or two tiny pills per day. But does it actually work as well as the existing phosphate binders? 
Well, Unicesive has done a lot of research to back up their claims. In fact, they've got over 40 patents protecting this technology globally. Wow, 40 patents, that's impressive. It is, and they've done clinical trials too. They started with a phase I study in healthy volunteers mm -hmm. just to make sure it was safe, you know. Right. And then they did a head-to-head -head comparison with Phosphorinol, which is an existing phosphate binder, and OLC actually performed just as well in terms of binding phosphate. So not only is it easier to take, it's just as effective. It seems that way, yeah. And they didn't stop there. They did a pivotal clinical trial specifically in CKD patients on hemodialysis. Oh, wow. And the trial met its goals. Yeah. OLC was well tolerated at effective doses, which is really important for any long-term medication. That's fantastic news. So what's next for OLC? Are we talking FDA approval soon? They're definitely on that path. They're using the 505B2 pathway, which is designed for drugs that are similar to already approved products, but with improvements like a lower pill burden. So given their positive clinical trial data, I think they have a pretty good shot. Fingers crossed. So let's talk market potential for a second. If OLC does get approved, what kind of impact could it have? Well, the global market for hyperphosphatemia treatments is massive. We're talking over $2.5 billion. And the U.S. alone accounts for over $1 billion of that. Remember, there's still a huge need for better, more patient-friendly options. Right, so OLC could really shake things up in the market? It definitely has the potential. That lower pill burden could be a game changer for patients. And ultimately, it could lead to better health outcomes. This is all really interesting, but Unisasive isn't a one-trick pony, right? I understand they have another exciting development in their pipeline. You're right. They also have UNI-494, which is a whole new type of molecule designed to tackle acute kidney injury. AKI, right. Exactly. AKI is a sudden loss of kidney function. It can be caused by things like sepsis, certain medications, even a sudden drop in blood flow to the kidneys and it can be really serious, even life-threatening. So it's a completely different problem than hyperphosphatemia. Totally different. And Unisitesive is taking a really unique approach to treating it. UNI-494 targets the mitochondria, which are like the powerhouses of our cells. Mitochondria, yeah, I remember those from biology class. Well, during an AKI episode, these mitochondria can get damaged and stop working properly, and UNI-494 is designed to jumpstart them to help them recover and protect the kidneys from further damage. Wow, so it's like a cellular repair crew going in to fix those damaged power plants. Exactly. And the good news is they've already completed a phase one safety study in healthy volunteers. So those results should be coming out soon, and then they can move on to further clinical trials. That's great news. I'm really curious to see how UNI-494 develops. But before we go any further, I think we need to take a break. We'll be right back with more on Unicycle Therapeutics after a short break. Do you want a deep dive podcast like this? Contact Bull Run by Charlie Devanzo. And we're back, continuing our deep dive into Unisysive Therapeutics. You know, when we were discussing OLC and its potential impact, it really hit me how important patient adherence is. Absolutely. You can have the best medication in the world, but no. if people aren't taking it, it's not going to work. It's like having a Ferrari and leaving it in the garage. What's the point? Exactly. Yeah. And with hyperphosphatemia, you need that consistent daily management. It's not a one and done kind of thing. No, it's a long term commitment. And that's where that pill burden can become a real obstacle. Imagine you're already dealing with kidney disease, the demands of dialysis, and then on top of that, you have to swallow handfuls of large, sometimes chalky pills, multiple times a day, every single day. It's like a constant physical reminder of your illness almost. Yeah, it can be really tough. It can make people feel overwhelmed, even hopeless. Yeah. And it's easy to see why someone might start skipping doses or give up on treatment altogether. Oh, OLC's lower pill burden. That's not just about convenience. It's about addressing a psychological barrier to treatment. Exactly. It's about <laughs> making the treatment less intrusive, less of a burden, more sustainable in the long run. And that can have a ripple effect on someone's overall well-being. Absolutely, yeah. When people stick to their treatment, their phosphate levels are better controlled, which in turn lowers the risk of those complications. We talked about the bone problems, the heart issues, even calcification of the arteries. It's amazing how something that seems like a small change, like making a medication easier to take, can potentially have such a huge impact on someone's health. It really is. And it just goes to show that innovation in healthcare isn't always about discovering a brand new drug. Sometimes right. it's about finding a smarter, more patient-centered way to use existing treatments. I love that. I'm excited to see what comes out of Kidney Week 2024 and how Unicycive's work is received by the medical community. 
But more importantly, I'm excited for what it could mean for people living with kidney disease. Me too. It's a great reminder that behind all the science and all the clinical trials, there are real people facing real challenges. At the end of the day, that's what really drives inhibition. It's that desire to make a difference in people's lives. Well, speaking of making a difference, let's shift gears a little bit and talk about Unicycive's other exciting development, UNI-494. This is a whole different area of kidney health. Right. UNI-494 is all about acute kidney injury, or AKI, as it's often called. AKI, yeah. Remind us again what that is. So AKI is basically a sudden, rapid decline in kidney function. It can be caused by things like infections, certain medications, even a sudden drop in blood flow to the kidneys. Like if you have a traumatic injury. Exactly. Yeah. And it can be really dangerous, even life-threatening in some cases. So how are they approaching this with UNI-494? What makes this treatment different? So UNI-494 works in a very unique way. It targets the mitochondria, which are like the tiny powerhouses inside of our cells. They're responsible for producing energy. But during an AKI episode, these mitochondria can get damaged and stop working properly. Oh, I see. And that's where UNI-494 comes in. It's designed to actually jumpstart those mitochondria, help them recover, and protect the kidneys from further damage. So it's like uh, it's like giving your kidneys a boost of energy. Yeah, exactly. And the good news is that they've already completed a phase one safety study in healthy volunteers. Okay. So we should be getting those results soon, and then they can move on to further clinical trials. That's exciting. But you said AKI is kind of an umbrella term, right? There are different types and causes. So is Unicisive targeting all types of AKI with this, or are they focusing on specific situations? That's a great question. And you're right, AKI is a complex condition with many different causes. But for now, Unicisive has decided to focus their efforts on a particular type of AKI that's especially challenging, and that's delayed graft function, or DGF, in kidney transplant patients. Right, we talked about that a bit earlier. That's when the new kidney doesn't start working properly right away after a transplant. Exactly. And it's a big problem because it can mean that the patient has to stay on dialysis longer and there's a higher risk of the body rejecting the new kidney. So Unicisive is hoping that UNI-494 can help prevent or at least minimize those effects of DGF. Exactly. They want to give those transplanted kidneys the best possible chance of surviving and thriving. And, you know, they actually received orphan drug designation from the FDA for UNI-494 specifically for DGF. Okay. And remind us what that designation means. So orphan drug designation is granted to drugs that are intended to treat rare diseases. Okay. It comes with certain benefits for the drug developer, like tax credits and fee waivers, and it also helps to expedite the drug approval process. So it's a big deal for Unicisive. It is. It shows that the FDA recognizes the potential of UNI-494 to address a serious and unmet medical need. This is all really fascinating stuff. It sounds like Unicisive is really pushing the boundaries of what's possible in kidney health. I think so too. They're definitely a company to watch. Okay, well, we need to take another quick break, but when we come back, we'll be wrapping up our deep dive into Unicisive Therapeutics with a look at the company's culture and their commitment to patient-centric care. Stay tuned. Welcome back to our deep dive. We're wrapping up today with uh, Unicisive Therapeutics. Unicisive, yeah. I'm feeling uh, pretty optimistic about the future of kidney health after uh, all this. What about you? Yeah, definitely. We've uh, covered a lot of ground today. It's been a really interesting journey. Absolutely. And, you know, as we wrap things up here, I kind of wanted to shift gears a little bit. You know, we've talked a lot about their uh, innovative treatments, but I want to talk about the company itself a little bit. What's their story? What drives them? Yeah, I think what's really impressive about Unicisive is that even though they're a relatively young company, they're already tackling some of the toughest problems in kidney disease, and they're doing it with uh, a real sense of purpose. Yeah, and you know, what I really admire about them is their focus on the patient. Absolutely. They're not just developing drugs, they're trying to understand the challenges that people with kidney disease face every single day. Right. It's not just about the science. It's about developing treatments that are actually practical, that fit into people's lives. Exactly. And you see that with their approach to OLC, yeah. you know, reducing that pill burden, making it easier for people to actually stick to their treatment plan. And you see it with their work on UNI-494 for DGF. Right. It's all about improving quality of life for patients. You know, I really get the sense that they're not just in it for the profit. No, absolutely. Yeah. You know, they genuinely want to improve the lives of people affected by kidney disease. Yeah, it's refreshing to see a company that's really driven by 
um, that kind of mission. Absolutely. Their upcoming presentations at Kidney Week, that's a huge moment for them. It is, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it's a chance to share their research with the world and to uh, really contribute to the advancement of kidney health. It's amazing to think about the impact that this one company could have. I know, it's inspiring. Well, I'm so glad we had the chance to uh, take this deep dive into Unisys of Therapeutics today. Me too. It's been a great conversation. You know, they're doing some truly remarkable work, and I'm definitely going to be following their journey very closely. I'm sure a lot of our listeners will be too. And for everyone listening, you know, I hope this deep dive has given you a better understanding of the challenges and um, the incredible progress that's being made in kidney health. So stay curious, keep learning, and we'll catch you next time on The Deep Dive.